The NFL Scouting Combine is here, and I thought that I would spend some time talking about it. Unfortunately, Thursday morning, Kenny Pickett went out there, got his hand measured, and all of a sudden my Twitter timeline was filled with people and bad takes about hand size. And listen, if you're going to do this kind of stuff, you know the obvious joke that people are going to be making. Try to make it a little bit different. Try to think of something else. Give us a new variation of this. It's kind of like the aristocrats. Like give it like we know what the what the stock joke is. Try to give us something a little bit different. But here's what was interesting to me and actually I don't really care about this. The guy played in Pittsburgh, although he did have 23 turnovers last year, so maybe it is significant, but he had the third smallest hand size since 2003, which is interesting to me because the NFL research team released the guys who had the smallest hand size. And it was a lot of dudes you probably have never heard of, except one name that was on it who had the smallest hands measured at the scouting confine. It was Cliff Kingsbury. Cliff Kingsbury. That's right. You forget that he was a quarterback at Texas Tech. He went out. He was drafted by the Patriots in the sixth round. Did not work out by Tom Brady. Spoiler alert on that one. But it's also interesting that that Baby Hands there went on to get an, a, a contract extension with the Arizona Cardinals. Think about this. The Arizona Cardinals have extended the contract of Cliff Kingsbury through the 2027 season. And to me, he's kind of like Arizona Matt Nagy, but with a better haircut. I can't imagine throwing that kind of money at a guy whose teams have collapsed in each of the last two seasons. If I'm an Arizona Cardinals fan, I could sit there and I'd be very upset. It would be kind of similar to the Bears giving a contract extension to Matt Nagy after he reached the playoffs two years ago. And I know a lot of people were upset when Matt Nagy was given a fourth year, but at least he wasn't signed through 2026, which would have been the equivalent. So I think at some point, I know we all love to bag on the McCaskies, or you do, not me. I'm a McCaskies defender. I think we should uh, thank our lucky stars that we didn't do that. You know, I've gone too long. Sammy, let's start the show. Turn up your volume because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast with Adam Ray. Trying to cut it back, Justin Fields making magic happen. There goes Fields, touchdown! The Sickest Chicago Bears and Fantasy Football Podcast. Sports entertainment like no other. It's going to be sick. Welcome to the Sick Podcast with Adam Rank, because it's me, Adam Rank, here on a Thursday as we record this during the height of the Scouting Combine, and we're not going to go over it too much. To me, the Scouting Combine gets a little bit too much importance because a couple of years ago, Cooper Cup went out there and had a dominant college career at Eastern Washington, went to the Senior Bowl, and was amazing. And then his 40 time wasn't great at the NFL Scouting Combine, and everybody passed on him. And, well, turns out he went out and had one of the greatest receiving seasons of all time. He was the Super Bowl MVP. I'm, I'm pausing. I, I, I think he was the Super Bowl MVP. He might have been. But uh, I don't want to spend too much time. So uh, joining us here in a little bit, in a little bit, not quite yet, but in a little bit, we're going to have Stephanie Smalls joining us to be talking about some other things in the world of football. And we'll be talking about some fantasy football as well. Our first edition of Fantasy Island will be coming up today. But I did want to go over a couple of things Regarding the Chicago Bears, now Tuesday night, we did have Shane Marshaw of the Tape Never Lies Network. Tremendous, tremendous talk that we had on Tuesday night. If you missed it, it's still available on YouTube. I implore you to go out and listen to it and watch it. It is one of the best conversations that we've had. And this is no disrespect to anybody. I know we've had Draft Dr. Phil. We've had Bear Down Cuz. We've had uh, we had Johnny Wood. We've had a lot of we, – we, we, who else? Jacob and Fonte. We've had some great people. We had uh, – Alex Brown, like we've done a great job of getting some quality guests. Shane might have been the best. I, I'll say it. Listen, I rank things and this is what I do. I'm not afraid to go out there. No disrespect to anybody else. And if anybody wants to return to try to one up Shane, that's OK. But it was, you know, it's a perfect timing, too, because there's a lot of news going on with the Chicago Bears. And I did want to go over a couple of things that GM Ryan Poles talked about this week in Indianapolis, talking about the scouting combine and some of the things that that really stand out to him. And I think this one kind of went under the radar when he was talking about what he looks for in the scouting combine. I'm going to quote him here. He says, I really believe it's what you don't see. And that's the medical. You want to minimize the risk that you take on. So knowing how healthy a guy is 
is very important. Actually, I put very in there. That, that was my word. Or no, that where there's some issues that they need maintenance that you can provide with them, with your staff back at the facility so that they can stay healthy and perform at a high level. Uh, significant because we did lose, you know, the majority of the rookie year with, with Tevin Jenkins. I don't know if that's a admission that he might not have drafted Tevin Jenkins or not, or perhaps, again, the, the back half of that statement intimates that, hey, you know what, you knew the risk that you would be taking on, but it's worth it because this is a player who could develop. It'll also be interesting to see what happens with Tariq Cohen moving forward because they don't know uh, how he's going to perform uh, physically, you know, having missed a majority of pretty much two seasons. Now, two other things that I thought were very interesting that Ryan Poles talked about, it was regarding the wide receiver position. And I thought it was very telling because people keep asking, like, what kind of receivers do we need? Do we need tall guys? Do we need fast guys? And you know what? The one thing that he intimated was like size, shape, none of that stuff matters. And I'm going to quote him once again where he said, and this is coming from Bears GM Ryan Poles, they come in different shapes and sizes and speed. I think it comes down to playmakers. We saw that in the Super Bowl. Guys that can make plays when their number is called. That's what we look for. And that is a very important quote from Ryan Poles because like everybody gets enamored with 40 time. It's one of the reasons why John Ross was the ninth overall selection of the Cincinnati Bengals a couple of years ago. Well, the guy had to switch to defensive back when he ended up with the New York Giants. Like he just couldn't get on the field. He couldn't stay healthy. He couldn't stay on the field. His college tape never showed you that he was going to have long lasting success in the NFL. So we're very positive that Ryan Poles is coming out here talking about guys being playmakers. And again, I will quote him one more time. And you can see that on college tape. I will say one of the benefits of the combine is that you get to see some of the physical traits as well. What sets them apart? Is it the size? Is it length? Is it explosion? Is it speed? We'll put all that together. But I would say that it all boils down to just being a playmaker. And anybody who has watched the Chicago Bears over the last number of years knows that this team needs playmakers. We need those Tyree Kill type of players. And we saw it last year a little bit with Jakeem Grant. Darnell Mooney has made some plays. Allen Robinson, during the course of his career, was once a playmaker. Didn't translate last season. But it's good to know that Ryan Poles is now focusing on guys who make plays. And, and honestly, it will go back. And if you think about if Ryan Poles had been the general manager back in 2017, 2018, the, the Mitch Trubisky draft. Mitch Trubisky was drafted on attributes. What you saw at the combine, size, uh, hand size, arm arm strength. But guys like Deshaun Watson, guys like Patrick Mahomes performed well on the field. And no surprise, the Chiefs ended up selecting Patrick Mahomes because they saw him on film and saw that he was an electric player. Then you go to the combine, some of these things are like, okay, that then you can use those evaluations to back up what you're seeing on the film. And I think this is going to be very important for the Bears moving forward. And then we also, Shane and I also talked about this too as well, um, is that Poles intends to reshape the offensive line, like literally, and again, quoting him, we're going to change it up a little bit. But just in terms of the style, a lot of those guys, and the message has been clear, we've got to change body types a little bit. we got to get lighter. we got to get quicker. And that is going to be a huge thing for the Chicago Bears. We want to see that offensive line that's just nasty. Just nasty, making huge plays. And I think, you know, he also alluded to guys like Tevin Jenkins who were unafraid to go out there and protect quarterback Justin Fields. He wants to see a lot more of that. So I think the attitude and the shape of the offensive line with the Chicago Bears is going to be uh, changing in the near future. So a lot to be excited about with the Chicago Bears. And again, I implore you, if you missed Tuesday night's show, with Shane Marshaw. I hope you all go back and watch it. And if you did, watch it again. Leave a comment. We appreciate everybody who checked it out. But right now, we're going to turn our attention to the rest of the NFL and to talk about the NFL, the Giants. We're going to talk some Giants today because they own the Bears' first overall, or they, they own the Bears' first pick. And uh, we got some other things to go over. So please welcome to the show my friend, Stephanie Smalls, an NFL betting enthusiast, a fantasy expert. Uh, she's an analyst for Champions Round. And Stephanie, how are you? 
Adam Rank. It's been too long since we've been able to chop it up. Very excited to be here today. No, I'm excited to uh, to have you on the show as well. Obviously, been one of my favorite follows. We had a lot of fun last summer uh, doing some shows together, so it's great to have an opportunity to talk to you uh, once again. I will say this too, and I think it's important to point out, you're now a golf enthusiast, which is one of the coolest things. I know that we're both kind of telling on ourselves earlier today, talking about like, yeah, we should be watching the combine, but we're all like, we're all in on the Arnold Palmer, right? <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to see what Max Homa is doing because I want to yeah. see and gets another win. Uh, but yeah, I did uh, lie a little bit. I was watching golf instead of tuning into combine, but that's what notification updates are for. So I was able to see the Kenny Pickett news. That seems like the biggest thing that came out today that everyone is up in arms about. Yeah. Do you think it's too much is being made of that. I mean, I know that uh, when you look at the list of guys with that hand size who've made it to the end of it, like none of them do. Like I I, I want to be dismissive of it because like who cares? Can the guy play or can he not? But at the same time, he did yeah. have a little bit of a fumbling problem at Pittsburgh. Exactly. And he's a little bit older, right? Like I joke, I keep joking around today. He's going to be 60 in September. He's not going to be 60, but I'm pretty sure he's turning 25 soon. He had a breakout. Don't love that. He just has a lot of knocks for him, especially from like a fantasy perspective. That's definitely someone that I'm staying away from. It's going to take the right team. Uh, I think he's probably a little bit more polished than some of these other rookie QBs, but I'm not excited, especially with the fumbling. Like that's where you can combine like the analytic part and whatever you see at the combine. It's like, that's, you're not doing yourself any favors there, Mr. Pickett. <laughs> He's also the guy you might've seen this on sports and I'm not talking about you, but I'm talking about people in general. <laughs> um, he was the guy who did the fake slide and then ran for a touchdown. Like, hmm. which to me, when I saw that play and he did the fake slide, I'm like, this guy is destined to be a Green Bay Packer. Like that's the kind of cheap, that's the kind of cheap BS that the Packers are known for. That I think he would fit in perfect with that organization. Cause I'll tell you this, and Stephanie, I'm sorry that you're gonna sit here and endure this <laughs> rant for a moment. But the Aaron Rodgers fake, like the <laughs> like to me, is one of the cheapest plays in football. And Tony Romo and Troy Aikman just love it. Like he's such a smart player. I'm like, oh, you're yeah. the dude playing pickup basketball, going like, ha, 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 ha. and you're like, yeah. okay, and you throw the ball, you're like, oh, wait, that guy's not on my team. That is the same thing. Not illegal, but like. <laughs> He's also the, the guy that starts rumors about himself going to another team and then returning and playing for the same team every single year. Uh, he does stay on brand, I guess, like on and off the field. <laughs> the oh, my gosh. Like. I feel though he's he's going back to the Packers though, right? There's no way. Yeah, I mean, you know? I even said I'm not entertaining this. Like, I feel for uh, you know that division over there. It'd be lovely to get rid of him, but we've seen this. You know, this is a tale as old as time. It's almost like a tradition at this point, right? Like we kick off the comment in the draft. It's always with some big Aaron Rodgers headline, and then come week one, guess who's playing for the Green Bay? There he is once again. So uh, I think he likes the attention a little bit. I'm not, I decided I'm not putting energy. It's exhausting. He's exhausting, honestly. He's a little bit too much work. Like it's like, yeah, <laughs> if you weren't, you're lucky you're so good at football because people yeah. would be so over you. Uh, yeah. It wouldn't be funny. And, you know, Russell Wilson, I think is the same way. I think they're both in the same category. And I put this out on a tweet yesterday is that, Aaron Rodgers and, and Russell Wilson were playing for the Packers and Seahawks, respectively. There's no way around that. You don't find quarterbacks as good as them who still have a lot of prime years. That's just right. no, they're not being they're expensive. Like a lot of the teams that need a quarterback are not going to dump their pockets for these guys that are still, yes, they're older, they can give you a lot of years, but like not to the extent that you should just totally uh open the bag for them. Yeah, I think if one quarterback was gonna get traded. And not counting Deshaun Watson because there's a lot of issues going on with him uh, mm -hmm. off the field, which makes it so difficult to evaluate. But Kyler Murray seems like if you're going to try to trade for one of these quarterbacks and feel like you're going to have to give up a number of first round yeah. picks, Kyler Murray seems like the guy to take a swing on. Oh, absolutely. And I'm a big Kyler fan. Yes, his, you know, I didn't even read the whole Asian post that they put out a little too long uh, for my liking. I think he probably could have taken a little bit of responsibility in there because he didn't play fantastic this year, but he's still a very good talent and someone is going to pay him. So if Arizona doesn't want to, 
uh, someone will because he's he's got a lot of time left in him. Do do the Cardinals forget the the Josh Rosen year? Was that just like one like one bad season that they had that they've just been able to put out of their mind like it never happened? Like you gave up on a quarterback after one season, and now you're starting to have a repeatable pattern with mm-hmm. Kyler Murray, who admittingly is a little bit better of a talent than Josh Rosen was, <laughs> but it's a little alarming. Yeah, Arizona is like I guess they're okay with always being like a little like just above average good. Like I don't know why you guys want to just see, you're in the weird of of just being like just better and over that uh, area of being like a great team, but they always fall short. A lot of that probably has to do with Cliff. I'm pretty sure they just gave him extension. So uh, I don't they know did. what's going on. They, they need to figure it out. Like come on, every every year it's like so exciting, and then at the end they drop the ball. Did you not pay attention in the green room when I was sitting there going on about Cliff Kingsbury getting an extension? I was, trying to, get you, I was trying to get you uh, fired up again about it. Thank you. Well, it's it's re- it 2027. It is ridiculous. Yeah. That's a yeah. long, like, what are I you saying? I think the Jack Taylor extension was a little aggressive. Like, not that I think that he shouldn't stay there, but, like, I think extending him immediately just because he, like, got to the Super Bowl is a little aggressive. Extending Cliff Kingsbury, like now we're talking about really aggressive. Like, is no one watching what's going on? We're just handing out extensions. Yeah, what are they, like, do they, uh, I don't know. There, I, there must don't be some. don't want to your elite quarterback. Like, what are you guys doing? Figure That's the thing, yeah. Like, we're, we're willing to invest in Cliff Kingsbury, <laughs> whose teams have collapsed. He's kind of like the Charlie Hoffman of NFL head coaches. <laughs> And like Charlie Hoffman, if you if if he had, when once he makes the Champions Tour, like he's going to be great because Charlie Hoffman is the best three round golfer of all time. And if you're not familiar with Charlie Hoffman, pay attention to Saturday at the Masters. Charlie Hoffman will be in the top ten, and then you, you won't hear on you you won't even see a shot of his on Sunday. Every year it happens this way, and that's what Cliff Kingsbury is like. It's like yeah, house of fire. First eight weeks of the season, the Cardinals, mm-hmm. and I defended the Cardinals too on the Total Access post game show on Monday nights, which I happen yeah. to do. Uh, and listen, I was like very effusive in praise, and then everything just kind of, you know, collapsed. And you got a quarterback who's out there pouting, which I'm understandable. He's a young kid, and this is one of those things that looks bad, but I'm like, you know what? There's plenty of memes of like Aaron Rodgers throwing like tablets yeah. or whatever, like. A lot of these guys don't handle losing very well. And I know that Russell Russell Wilson's a different person. Like I love Russell Wilson. Like I yeah. I you you won't catch me saying anything bad about Russell Wilson. And he's the annoying like, "Come on guys, we got this." You're like, "Bro, yeah. we're down 38." Like it's okay. He work. Like he's one of those like, yeah, he's like very uh I don't know what the word is for him, but yes, there's not nothing that you can say, but I think the league is different now, right? Like you even see Tom Brady throwing the I, the iPad yeah. surfaces. Like it's just different. Now you're allowed to like throw a tantrum and it's fine. But what did they blow? They were what? 11 and 0 at one point. Yeah. I think they were 16 and 0. No, I, um, they were very good. They were eight, they were eight and one. I know. I think that's what it was. Uh, Look, I'm giving them too much credit. Well, this is, yeah, I know, I, I don't want to get into the, you know, anytime you start talking about the Cardinals, the, the fans of the footballers come out and they're like, hey guys, gimmick infringement. I'm like, okay, that's right. But you know what? I got uh, both those guys, all three of those guys, I should say, they talk about the Bears enough. So I think that I'm okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's, it is interesting to see the way that that's kind of, unfold. like it is, I, I don't think it's getting talked about enough. Like I, I see the thing, like everybody's going in on, uh, on the, on the kid's hands. I'm like, nobody's saying a word. About Cliff, we're just accepting this. Is this we're like, just cool with that? Like you guys are fine with that? Like no one said a single thing. Why? Why are we not saying something? And Arizona is so frustrating. Like there's no reason that they didn't make a, a true playoff run. Like you guys had no reason to. And they totally collapsed. I mean, they're like they're kind of like Green Bay Junior. They're like they're being yeah. <laughs> you know just like totally choking, and it's like out of control. But they did nothing. And then how do you see that season? See what's like what you have and what the, and then extend him. I, I can't. Yeah, that, that should have been a hot seat situation. And I equated yeah. it to Matt Nagy, um, at least the bear. And again, everybody comes after the bears and they're like, Oh, they kept Matt Nagy too long. You're like, dude, they could have extended him and they didn't. And they cleaned right. it out. And now the organization feels like it's headed in the right direction. 
I think the Cardinals are in a lot of trouble. Could be in a lot of trouble. And it's, I don't know. I also said, we said, we talked about this on Tuesday night. Like this whole, the whole notion of these young coaches with McVay and Zach Taylor and, and Cliff Kingsbury and even Kyle Shanahan, you know, they didn't, they didn't win a Super Bowl either. You look at it, Sean McVay, and I said this again, I'm repeating myself, but Sean McVay is very lucky that he was going up against one of his protégés in the Super Bowl because Zach Taylor, of all people, was actually out coaching him. And if yeah. it had gone, like if he had been facing, if he would have been facing the Chiefs, if he would have been facing uh, probably the Titans, yeah, Patriots for sure, like he would have been exposed once again. And that Rams team would have been, they like, remember the Super Bowl a couple of years ago? Like Aaron Donald just had this dominant performance. Do you even remember him? from the Super Bowl against the Patriots? Like, I I don't. Like, did he play? Like, I had to go back and think about that. Yeah, no, I don't. I actually do not at all remember him. No. So, I I don't know. So, it's very interesting. And all of a sudden, Zach Taylor, some coach who was going to be run out of football, now gets an extension. Like, what changed? Like, oh, your quarterback is excellent. So, I don't right. know. So, Joe Burrow is saving him, making him some money. So, I hope some of that. Why do we decide to keep a coach? Like, what is the – there's no consistency to why a coach stays and why a coach goes. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. And I, I, you're not going to get rid of a guy who goes to the Super Bowl, but I don't know. Like, good luck with all that. Thankfully, Joe Burrow is very good. But let's yeah. talk about some teams that are not very good. We've been talking about the Bears. <laughs> I didn't want to bring – I. you know what? I wanted, to br- I wanted to bring you on because I wanted to talk about the Giants for a little bit. I, I think the Giants – well, no, I think that, like, there's a lot of a lot of commiseration we can have. Like, we're, we're following similar paths. How are you feeling, though, now that you got rid of Joe Judge? And it was very touch and go. Like, if, if Joe Judge had been the, the coach of the Cardinals, he probably would have gotten a 10-year extension. You guys – and it looked like you weren't going to. But you yeah. did finally make the move to get rid of him. How are you feeling about the direction of the Giants at this moment? I'm actually also convinced that Giants Twitter is the reason why they ended up getting, I think that they bullied him. <laughs> they bullied Mara so badly that he had no choice but to fire him. I don't think he would have done that uh, if he didn't get absolutely harassed. Um, I'm optimistic. I'm hesitant to get too excited. There's a lot of holes to fill. I really like Shane. I like everything that he talks about, his idea of building from the draft, something that, you know, I mean, Gettleman attempted to do, but failed very miserably because some of the Giants turned to the place where the second you leave, you have a career high year. Uh, but then when you're on our team, you stink. Uh, it's a, a very on brand flout. I mean, you go on and on about the guys. Even Eli Apple made it to the Super Bowl, didn't play very well, but he was yeah. a giant at one point. Uh, I, I'm excited. I think they have a lot of picks, which is cool, thanks to you guys. Um, I think that they are broke. They're starting to make yeah. moves, which are is exciting. I think there's a lot to like about this team. But, again, fans get so excited. It's like, yep, we win nine games. games. No, like, if we win five games, that's actually really awesome. Um, I just want to watch – like, I want real football that I can watch. This was the first year of Born and Raised Giants fan. I shut the TV off. Like, I literally could not watch uh, this Jake Fromm, uh, Mike Glennon – nonsense circus monkey act that was going on on the field so i just want watchable i just want a little competitive football is that too much to ask for well you're asking a bears fan that's what we've been asking for for the last couple of years is a little bit of competitive football you did hire brian dable who was the favorite of a lot of bears fans who were hoping that he would be the, the the coach here in the second city how do you feel about that hire i thought it was great and i thought it was a fait accompli once you hired joe shane that dable was going to come i mean it was going to be between him and Leslie Frazier, but I think that Dable was the way to go. How did you feel about that move? Yeah, I loved it. I think that they, I will say so far, like I really like all of the hires that they've made on the coaching staff and talk about like actually not staying uh, in this, uh, you know, place where we're just hiring uh, in the program, hiring in like finally for once you're hiring outside of the building, getting some real fresh faces in there that don't have the same mentality. Um, I like people and I, you know, and this is going to come up at some point because Twitter loves to talk about it, even though no one is actually saying this, like the Josh Allen thing is, is interesting. It's interesting that they picked someone that was with someone like Josh Allen and the success that they had. So is Daniel Jones as talented as Josh Allen? No. No one is saying that. I, I I am convinced that Twitter has made this up. Like, this is a made-up concept. No one is comparing their talent or what he can do. It's just that he is probably the best option if you're going to uh, highlight Daniel Jones's 
talent and actually develop him. So I'm excited. I think they couldn't have possibly hired more pieces to help Daniel Jones. So he literally like doesn't have an excuse this year. So that's at least we know what we're going to be able to do with him probably at the end. But I like Debo. I like everything. He didn't make promises, which we're not used to. You know, Joe Judge is up there promising us this, promising that. So I think he's ready to at least try to move forward uh, and go in a different direction, which is not, which is can't be too hard because we have five consecutive like seasons with losing records. <laughs> And honestly, if, if Daniel Jones could develop into like a Kirkland version of Josh Allen, I think that's okay. Like that's not yeah. terrible. Even like a Tannehill, like can we get a little like Tannehill, Tannehill. something like that? Like a little leaving, my, getting uh, out of game. Like just something, someone just needs to use this kid the way he should be used. Get him the help that he needs. Kenny Galladay, stay healthy. Kadarius Tony, stay healthy. Um, and let's get an O-line so he at least has time to throw the damn ball uh, down the field. No, for sure. And I think that's one of the things that you always talked about was that if your O-line stinks, your team mm-hmm. is going to stink. The Bengals kind of put that on its ear this season. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I it's guess it's not like <laughs> the, exception to the, the exception that proves the rule. I don't know if that is applicable right there. But would you guys uh, – but speaking of Dable and quarterbacks that he worked with, would you welcome Mitch Trubisky into the fold? No, I mean, like, okay, here's the thing. Like, I, I think Mitch Trubisky, like, he's one of those guys just got the short stick. I think Daniel mm-hmm. Jones is another one, kind of got the short stick, kind of just walked into a crappy situation, crappy coach, crappy weapons, a lot of injuries, didn't really have, you know, you weren't, it, nothing exciting was going to come from that. Uh, but yeah. I think with Mitch Trubisky's case is, like, if you're not going to suddenly be the guy, you know, you're now on like another team. You left, you're someone's draft bus. I just don't know. I think he's a good band aid. Like, I think Washington yeah. should highly pursue that. I think that would be a great spot for him, especially if you're not in love with one of these younger guys, especially because a lot of these younger guys, I think, would benefit from sitting and they need to develop a little bit more. They're not as NFL ready as we've seen in the past. So, like, Trubisky would be, a, like, I think great in Washington. Uh, he could get the ball to McLaurin. He can use his legs a little bit. Maybe you guys can fix some of the other holes you have. But I think the Giants, sticking with Daniel Jones, he can win you games. Is he the future? No. Don't pick up his fifth-year option. Get rid of him next year. Uh, but I think you can win games with him. Very suspicious that you want Mitch to go to the, the conference to go play in Washington. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, I, won't, I won't try to read too much into that. You also talked earlier – about having a, a bounty of picks, a lot of that coming from the Chicago Bears and the Justin Fields trade. Mm-hmm. I think this is one of those instances where both sides are pretty pleased. The Giants get two, or including their own, you have two picks in the top 10. The Bears are very excited. They they have the quarterback of their future. Which mm-hmm. quarterback would you rather have, though, all things being equal? Would you rather have Daniel Jones or Justin Fields? Uh, I hate this question. Um, I probably, I mean, God. Giants fans hopefully won't watch this because it's a podcast. So I probably would go with Justin Fields. Uh, I think Jones had a little bit better of a rookie year, actually. Um, I'm interested to see what Jones can actually do. I think Fields was also not set up very well. They weren't highlighting what he does very well. He needs weapons. Um, I'll throw out two names since this is a Bears podcast. I was talking about this last night, so I'll go off topic a little bit. Calvin Austin from Memphis and Dotson from Penn State are two guys that I think could fall to the Bears and be awesome over there. But uh, so two names for everyone to keep an eye on. But yeah, I, you know, I would probably take Fields overall. I liked him coming out of college way more than I like Daniel Jones, but it is. What it yes. Is. Love it. And it goes back to the evaluation process of watching guys make plays and be playmakers. And I like Daniel Jones's talent. Daniel Jones to me is one of those guys that, oh, he he works well in the, well, he's tall, strong arm, he's athletic. Justin Fields has the tangible. We saw him dominate on the college mm-hmm. level. So I agree with you on that. I also, though, would like to point out, now we talk about quarterbacks, talk about that stuff. One of the things that you uh, have done very well is, uh, is talk about fantasy football in addition to gambling. Uh, by the way, your golf picks have been amazing. But you did pretty well fantasy-wise, too. And I know that a lot of times we have very similar tastes when it comes to fantasy picks. And I want to start delving into a little bit of fantasy football now. We've been mostly Bears uh, through the infancy infancy 
of the show. But since you're here, I think it's important to, to try to get some some fantasy information out there. And this was inspired by something that you did, uh, a draft you did the other night. You posted it on Twitter. You talked about it. And so for me, I thought that we would debut Fantasy Island right here, right now. We will have an animation for it at some point. But uh, if I could, and if I could have Sammy pull up, I have three players that you should buy for the coming season. And I want to pull those up right now. I want to get your take on this. I will allow you an opportunity to rebut to tell me that I'm full of it, but three guys that I'm looking at. Now, number one, I'm going to say Justin Fields based solely on something that you had happen to you where you had Justin Field or Justin uh, Jefferson fall to you in the second round. I think people are, are overlooking Justin Jefferson. He's going to have a new offense. He's uh, He's got Kevin O'Connell, who is the offensive coordinator, who's the head coach now. I think that he can have a true breakout on top of what he what he's also mm-hmm. done throughout the course of his career. Number two, I like Javante Williams. I know everybody's going to be backing off of him because the words of the GM in Denver saying that Melvin Gordon could return, it's like, fine. Like, Javante Williams is just a better player, and he's going to end up scoring more fantasy points. And I think that's a fait accompli. And if you want to pass on him because Melvin Gordon's there, like, be my guest. That's like passing on Austin Eckler a couple of years ago because Melvin Gordon was there and Austin Eckler went out there and had a great season. And speaking of the L.A. Chargers, I think Josh Palmer is somebody to keep an eye on moving forward, especially if Mike Williams ends up leaving the team. I think that Josh Palmer could develop into a nice player. And if the Chargers do not tag Mike Williams and do not bring him back, it's because they believe in Josh Palmer. And I think that uh, he could end up being a great value for you. So, Stephanie, I will ask you, how far off base am I? How am I doing? No, how is I don't my think list? you're far. I- a lot of uh you know dynasty two is like when are you buying these players when are you selling these players uh, are you picking up on the twitter trends like now is a great time to go out and get yourself some javante williams i love that absolutely because everyone gets a little scared a little coach talk we get nervous justin jefferson someone that might cost you a little bit more but is 100 percent worth it like he has not even touched the realm of where he can go uh zimmer for some reason did not like throwing the ball downfield to you have this right. amazing talent. They didn't even utilize him. I think he finished the year at PPR wide receiver four. There's no reason he can't have a wide receiver one year. And uh, he's, I mean, we're talking about years and years to come. He is a fantastic talent. I think Char Chase maybe dipped a little bit of his light, which is crazy. Uh, I think that with the new coaching staff in there, and trusting Kirk a little. We got to take, you know, we got to take the training wheels off Kirk. Like, it's time to let him, like, throw the ball. Like, it's okay. You're okay, Kirk. Like, you have your extra rib pads on. You're going to be fine. Like, just go out there and play ball. Because he had Kirk Cousins is not a bad quarterback. He gets the job done. I think that Zimmer really, like, had him under his grip and wasn't trusting him enough. So, if they can let Kirk air the ball or call or get the ball to Justin Jefferson and then let Jefferson just have an absolute year. Uh, I see him really breaking out next year. Yeah. I think Kirk Cousins is the Michelob Ultra of NFL quarterbacks. He'll do the job. Might not be your first choice. Might yeah. not, you're not walking into the liquor store being like, I can't wait to get my hands on a 12 or a Michelob <laughs> Ultra. But you know what? If it's a day where I know I'm going to be day drinking, be spending some time out in the sun, like Michelob Ultra makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I like Michelob Ultra. That's not yeah, a- it's pretty good on tap too. Like sometimes you do, oh, you great. want it. You're at the bar with your friends. Oh, do you have it on tap? Yeah, for sure. So there are those moments that it does shine and it it does the job. <laughs> no, I like uh, I like a lot of um, beers and cans most of the time, but Michelob Ultra is actually one that I prefer on draft, which is weird. Yeah, for it me. is. Yeah. Uh, do you have any guys that you you would buy on like outside of this list or anybody else you would want to add to this? Yeah, so there's three, two of them are Giants players, actually, and that's because their value, I think, is very low. Saquon Barkley is someone, obviously, that people are, you know, we're not in on Saquon Barkley. We can't stand Saquon Barkley. Forgetting the Saquon Barkley is a great talent, and right now you can get him probably at the cheapest that you could get him. Uh, I think that even if he goes to another team, that's even more exciting. If he stays on the Giants, fine. They get a better O-line. They protect him. He's, you know, two years removed from his injury there's still something to like about Saquon Barkley. Uh, so if you can get him for cheap, there's no reason. Yes. Is he probably like more RB2 talk if he can recover? Yeah. But I think that there, you know, that ceiling is there and there's something to still like about Saquon Barkley. No one will trade him to me because 
uh, they add a right. homer tax. So I haven't been able to get him at all. But another giant is Kadarius Tony. Uh, he's going to be the guy that I'm going after. I know a lot of people are buying low on Kenny Galladay. That's fine. You do you, boo. Like, I, I've done that. I, I'm good. I'm out on Kenny Galladay, even if he ends up having some miraculous tur- like turnaround. Not my thing. Uh, I mean, Tony had four game starts with, like, 420 yards. He just can totally – his yards after like contact is are absurd. So he is that very, you know, they want to use the Swiss army, whatever gadget, whatever you want to call him. That's fine. I think that what he possibly can be in this league, if used right, is very intriguing. No, I agree with you. And uh, Kadarius Tony was one player that I thought about putting on my list as well. Uh, was hoping that you were going to talk about him. So I would be able to, you know, sneak in Josh Palmer, but yeah, yeah. I think Kadarius Tony is, you know what, when you're looking for players in those year two breakout type of situations mm-hmm. with a new offense with Brian Dable, I think the Kadarius Tony and the, the, the momentum will start to build as we get closer to the summer. But I think that he's going to be somebody to take a look at right now. And if you're in dynasty leagues and have an opportunity to go out and pick him up, I would definitely advise you to do so. Time now to look at three guys, though. I would sell or I'm not buying or I'm not investing in this year. And we'll start mm-hmm. Dalton Schultz to me. I'll, I'll work my way down. Dalton Schultz, if he leaves the Dallas Cowboys, I think he could go out somewhere and get paid by some team that that needs help at tight end, and then they're going to be like, oh, wait, we're not using him the way the Cowboys did. His value will go down a bit. Matthew Stafford, quarterback's coming off a Super Bowl win. I just don't want any part of that, although Tom Brady kind of you know, reversed that trend by having one of his best seasons. But at the same time, I think Matthew Stafford, I think the Rams are a little bit risky. I think if Whitworth ends up retiring, I think they could have – some issues on the offensive line. So I'm going to kind of avoid him. And I think the one that stands out that everybody's going to look at and be like, what the hell are you talking about? (laughs) Debo Samuel is an excellent football player. He is one of my favorite players in the league. I think he's amazing. But again, we go back to the price. How much is it going to cost you? People are drafting Debo Samuel ahead of Justin Jefferson, which is just insanity to me. Debo, as great as he is, has had trouble staying on the field. It's just a matter. It's just a fact. And I lo- and we don't know what the what the what the quarterback situation is going to look like for the San Francisco 49ers. We don't know if, the, if, if Jimmy Garoppolo is going to end up being the guy. If Trey Lance is going to be ready to take over. To me, it is far too risky when you're putting the investment into a player like Debo Samuel. You better damn well know what you're getting with him. Like to me, Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, these guys are automatic. But people want to put Debo in that category, and I just can't do it. I, I, to me, it just doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, where do you stand on these three, or most importantly, how do you feel about Debo? I guess that's that's yeah. what people care about. What do you well, think? Am I, am I off base? No, I don't think so. I think that, again, like I said earlier, like part of Dynasty is knowing when value is at its peak. Like last season, I got trolled very heavily because I told – Everyone, I was selling Metcalf and I encouraged other people to do that. I saw his production was going to go in direction. Do not want it. To. There's a lot of question marks around the Seahawks. And you and now you'll never get what I got. I f- absolutely fleeced someone for him. And and it turned out, you know, I got a lot of rookie picks out of it. I think I even got, I forget who, who what receiver I got in a couple of packages too. But it's finding the right time. Debo is coming off a very good year by receiver three and PPR. And I think with Lance... You have to remember that now we're going to bring in a quarterback that we're going to be running RPOs and we're going to be able to use his leg. So is there going to be less opportunity as well? I think now is the time uh, to sell Debo because you could definitely clean up, I think. Matthew Stafford, another one. Gotta love the Super Bowl tax. Go go ahead. Get out of here, Matthew Stafford. Uh, I'm trying to get – I just put him on the trade block actually yesterday. Uh, I love Matthew Stafford. I think that he will still have a good year. But, again, we know how hard it is to – you know, come back and go and win a Super Bowl and replicate the same type of season you had. Uh, I think that there's still a lot of question marks around the roster. We don't know exactly what's going on there. And Matthew Stafford did fantastic. He, you might as well get what you can for him. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, what's funny is I don't think that people are high enough on his neighbor, Justin Herbert. And I think that what he did kind of flew under the radar this year that nobody mm-hmm. really seems to be talking about it. Because anytime I hear somebody talking about rankings and quarterbacks, and I know that Joe Burrow is a buzzworthy name, and I love Joe Burrow, but Justin Herbert to me is somebody like, God, should oh. he be the QB1 coming off the board? I think he might. Yeah, I, you know, I, it, I debated back and forth where to put him in my rankings. And 
you know, I was so close to putting him as my QB two. I kind of backed out. I don't know if that was like, you know, the echo chamber getting me a little bit, but Herbert, like now, if you want Herbert, you better get Herbert now because after, you know, this season, next season, you're not going to be able to be getting it for very cheap. No, absolutely. And you know what? I think that it's uh very, yeah, I think he's somebody to, to keep, I, Again, I'm looking at redraft and I'm looking at dynasty. I think that he's undervalued in both of those. So if you get an opportunity yeah. to go out there and grab him, uh, you should certainly do that. Well, listen, Stephanie, I want to thank you for stopping by. Uh, I know it's a little early to get into the fantasy chat a little bit, but I wanted to make sure that we got you on the show. And I appreciate uh, you coming on with us today. Where can people find you uh, if they want more information, if they want to follow your golf betting, any of your other picks? I know like, you're you're heavy in the in the gambling, which I don't really dabble in, but I think that I, yeah. I, whenever somebody asks, I'm like, talk to Smalls. That's not my <laughs> racket. That's hers. Where yeah. can people find you? Uh, and also, thank you so much for having me on. This is a blast. I always like to chop it up with you. If people want to find me, you guys can find me on Twitter at Steffi Smalls with three L's. Most of my work is with Champions Round, but you can check out my Twitter. A lot of a lot of tweets. I have to work through a little bit to find my stuff. But uh, again, I appreciate you for having me on, and I hope that our teams are actually turning it around. Well, I hope so, too. And, of course, we look forward to having you on later on as we get closer to redraft season and everything like that. So hopefully you will be agreeable agreeable to that. So thank you so much. Always. All right. There she goes, the great Stephanie Smalls. And that is going to do it for us here today. I want to thank everybody for checking out the show. Make sure you like and subscribe to the podcast. And, of course, you can check us out on YouTube or on all the social media channels and everything like that. If you have any fantasy questions, you want to start addressing some of those as we get closer, again, to dynasty draft season, to redraft season, starting to get into free agency. We'll have a lot of the, 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 the fallout of those moves and what can what it can mean for your fantasy upcoming. Make sure that you uh, like and subscribe to all of our channels. Get some questions in and we'll take some time. You know what? Maybe maybe if uh, if Sammy will allow it, you know, maybe we'll have a little private chat just for fantasy football at some point. We'll still do bear stuff. Don't worry about that. But again, I know a lot of you also like fantasy football. So we're going to try to make sure that we address that as well. But thanks again to the great Stephanie Smalls for joining us. Thanks to all of you for checking us out. And for that, Sammy, Let's roll that animation on out of the show. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast with Adam rank on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google play, and Apple podcasts.